what pray tell am I doing, you may ask. Well, I'm making some room for some new shelving that's coming in tomorrow. This is shelving that I've eyed since I, even before I even had the keys for the house or pretty much before I moved in. But I couldn't justify it because I already had this useless cabinet that needs a post onto itself. Um, so I've kind of just adjusted the sh storage in this room um, based around that monstrosity that's going to go somewhere else in the house. Um, I really like the side of the kitchen. I'm going to be able to live with this indefinitely. And then once I have the other option, um, I will be super happy. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you what I had here in this spot be before. It's a piece that I bought because I knew it was going to be very versatile. And it's a little like a little hutch or a little buffet. These are very like typical here. Um, just about every house has them because the kitchens you don't tend to have storage. Um, just a pine piece, um, just but very well finished with this very heavy kind of stain. I had bought another piece by this company. They refinish old furniture, so I knew I was um, buying something that was going to be uh, decent quality, uh, considering the materials that it's made of and the price and all that. So I moved it over here um, because I decided to take my sister up on her suggestion um, that I start building myself a curio cabinet. Um, now, a traditional curio cabinet doesn't look anything like this. It's a series of little cubbies in which you would display um, items like a collection or keepsakes and things like that. I'm not at a point where I want to invest in a piece like that. But I like the idea of starting to take things out of boxes and displaying them um, just to make it feel more homey, to make it feel more like, yeah, I'm, this, is, <laughs> this is technically supposed to be the forever home, right? So um, it's really nice to just kind of pull things out of boxes where they've been like a very, very long time. I mean, I've got some things that I haven't looked at in 20 years in here. So, um, so I'm going to start looking at maybe, um, frames to be able to display paper items. Um, but I'm just going to give you a little quick tour of what's in here. I think, um, it's a nice little roadmap of, you know, where I've been, where I'm going. So we'll start at the top left here, this little glass bottle here. Um, this I is a bottle. It holds um normally these come with a little cork stopper and they hold a liqueur called rakia that is very popular in the balkans and i won that little bottle on my walking tour of belgrade serbia for having the most or the biggest serbian vocabulary so i think that's pretty funny and i was glad that it got back from europe intact this little soapstone mule is a gift from a friend of mine who also um, lived in an RV and traveled full time for a long time. And it's a uh, comm commemoration, I guess you could say, of the time that I basically got detained by Canadian Customs and got accused of being a drug mule. Um, I don't feel like going any deeper into that story, but that started the really deep break that I have with my home country. Uh, this is a piece of a libre, which is a Mex traditional Mexican folk art. And I bought this when I was in Oaxaca or visiting a village near Oaxaca where they do it. And these are all hand painted and they're all unique. Uh, I love snakes and she's kind of got a cheeky grin on her. So she had to come home. Um, I've got just, this is just a little uh, frame that I just added because I had it there. Um, I bought this little candle from a local artisan hand painted and I'm trying to remember what the shell is made of. I remember she told me, I think it could be like a, an immature coconut or something, but it smells lovely. It smells like cinnamon. So I like to have, I can kind of get a whiff of it when I walk by. So, or when I could, when it was, um, out, out. Um, so over here I have a couple of old passports. I'm pretty sure I have some other ones. So I'm going to have to pull those out. Um, this was a BT phone card from when I was in Scotland in 1998 my luggage tag when I was doing the backpacking tour around uh, the hop on hop off backpacking tour in Scotland, my oyster card from when I was in London in um, summer of 2016. And then um, this, this is pretty amazing. I can't believe the condition this is in. This is a uh, bus or a train ticket um, from Glasgow to I'm not sure where 
Oh, glass to the airport. So this is my ticket. This is, yes, I'm looking at the date, July 7th of 1998. This was the bus ticket from Glasgow downtown into the airport to return to Montreal. Uh, and this is also in really amazing condition. This is my CTA visitor pass from Chicago. And this was purchased May 6th of 1999 when I went to Chicago for five days. Um, and then there's another ticket from Scotland, Sterling to Edinburgh, again in 98. This paperweight was a gift, a Christmas gift from a colleague when I worked for the Canadian government. And he and I didn't get along particularly well. And I was a little bit stunned to get something, uh, to get a gift from him, never mind something so beautiful. Um, it's handmade, it's like a resin, and it looks like a seascape. And I love the little bubbles in it. So I've always had this since he gave it to me. I don't, I bet you he probably doesn't remember giving this to me, but it's a cherished memory. And then I have some seashells that I've collected over the years. Down here, I've got my collection of brass candle holders. These were mostly purchased when I was antiquing in Wisconsin in 2005. This would have been the autumn of Hurricane Katrina. I was supposed to go down to New Orleans. I was supposed to be in New Orleans when Katrina hit, but um, I had a dental emergency that delayed the trip and made sure that I was home safe when the hurricane hit. So, can I believe in fate? This is a bracelet that my uncle who used to live in Mali brought back and I wore it until it basically fell apart. This was my dad's wallet and um, so everything that he used to have in his wallet, um, the photographs and, and different paperwork, I've got all that in there and I, that's a very treasured memory. Uh, and that's my dad when he was younger. So thought he was kind of like a cheeky little rascal guy there. And then over here, these are my medals from when I used to run the Ottawa Race Weekend 5K uh, when I lived over there. So um, I used to do a very good time. I was just around 45 to 50 minutes, which for my age category would have qualified me like um, in the army, I would have passed my 5K run test if I was joining the army. So I was very proud of that. Um, this is the boutonniere from my graduation robe when I graduated high school in June of 1996. And then here, these were interesting ticket stubs. Um, this is from when I saw the Colorado um, Rockies play the Cubs at Wrigley Field in Chicago. And I got these amazing student tickets and I was right over home plate, like right there. I don't really follow a lot of sports, but I understand baseball. I enjoy going to baseball games in the past and this was an unbelievable memory. I actually found a newspaper photo where I can see myself in the bleachers, which is amazing. Um, next to that, I've got a concert ticket from going to see Daniel Belanger, not a big fan, but my best friend at the time was. Um, my very first ticket to go see um, rugby. This was in 1994, I was in Ottawa, in that summer I was 15 years old and I was a nanny and the couple that I was nannying for took me to see the game because they were big fans. Um, this was, oh my goodness, I was very young. This was the Expos, the Montreal Expos against San Francisco. And this would have been, check the date on this. Is there even a date on this? It says 1983, May 22nd, 1983. I would have been about four years old. So I don't remember this game, but I was there. Um, this is my very first time going to the opera, uh, Yenufa. So just that was a birthday present to myself. I worked very hard and I paid for the ticket. Um, and this is again, when I was in Chicago, Art Institute of Chicago, I remember coming out of the museum and getting caught by a gust of wind that pretty much lifted me off the ground. So that's why they call it the Windy City. And then down here, my two license plates from when I was living in the Yukon. So one of these is my motorhome license plate and the other one was my car. And then I've got a few more little things here. I've got, this is a postcard that I bought of Castle Loma, which is um, a castle in Toronto, Canada. And that was from a trip where I went with a bunch of girlfriends and we kind of went to like to a fan convention. Um, and that was in 2000, August of 2000. This is a painting that I did. Oh my goodness, what's the date on that? It's somewhere in the mid 90s. And this ended up being in the art gallery in the library of my town for a full year. So I was very, very proud of that. So it's like, I called it the, um, uh, what did I call it in English? Well, in French, it's Le Centenaire, like the 100 year old tree. 
Um, and then this big button is when I went to see the Phantom of the Opera. I was in secondary two, so I was maybe 14, 15. Um, it was a big, you know, big event. And I remember my mother telling me to bundle up on the bus um, or bundle up for the trip because, you know, you never know the bus could break down and the bus actually did break down. So listen to your parents. And then I have this fan that my grandmother uh, brought me back from China and I've got a whole bunch of other things that she's brought me from her travels that I've got to find a home for. So this is kind of like a good start. I've got so many more ticket stubs and things I would love to eventually like that this would be a priority project where I could do like a proper museum exhibit with little labels with the dates. Um, the other thing that I would love to do and I'm thinking I'm going to use this wall is I've been wanting to do a timeline, a timeline uh, of with like pictures of different places that I've been and things that I've done that I've kind of, I kind of show my path to living here because I think it's, it's very, very difficult for me to explain it to people because I don't have like one of these nice, neat timelines. I went to school here, I grew up here, I went to school, I went to work and then I ended up here. Like it's so convoluted. Every time like somebody will say, well, how did you end up here? And I'll be like, well, I was house sitting in Bulgaria and that made some people interested in my house sitting for them in Merida. How did, how did you end up in Bulgaria? And then, you know, it just kind of goes back and back and back and back. So, um, so that's definitely like, those are definitely projects that I'm going to work on. Um, not priority projects. Um, I've got so much other stuff that I need to be doing, but projects that feel like it's worth investing the time and the money and supplies because I'm here for the long term. I'm, um, I think I've always known from the minute that I walked into this house, I've known that I was going to be here a long time. It's very, very strange. So we'll re-explore that in a few years. And I'll just finish off by showing you this painting, um, or it's like a print. Um, many, many, many years ago, like university years, we're talking 20, 20 something years. Um, I, with a bunch of girlfriends, we all, we all would make a list of 10 things that we wanted for Christmas and from super reasonable things to completely outrageous things like, you know, a car or something like that. And um, the other members of the of this like pool, the nine of them would look at each other's, we would look at each other, the other people's lists and we would decide, you know, what we could get on the list uh, for that person. So sometimes, you know, the group would get together and buy one big present or there would be, you know, nine small presents. Well, this was one I had requested a print of a raven because that's my spirit animal. So there's the raven. And um, so I got this beautiful print um, from a, a local artist. I'm not exactly sure. Sue Coleman is what it says. Um, and then I, ha I had to have it framed, but I've had, I had this in my home for, I've always had a place of honor for it. Um, uh, even in the motor home, I had, I had hung up. And I love here how it, there's like a light right there that shines right over it. It's kind of like my gallery wall. So that's my little curio cabinet. I will be back tomorrow, hopefully, maybe in a few days. We'll see how long the project takes, but with the kitchen reorganization that is going to be, I hate, it's such a cliche term, but it's gonna be a game changer.